So a 50-year-old woman with a history of cancer has some worsening shortness of breath and goes into the emergency department. Her heart rate is 120 and her other vitals are normal. A CT is ordered to rule out pulmonary embolism and this is the CTPA that was performed thereafter. So in this short video, we're gonna teach you how to approach these studies, what acute and chronic PEs look like, and some common pitfalls. Before watching, I suggest checking out our intro to CT chest video that covers the basics, including anatomy and an approach to CT chest in general. On our website, we have a case-based course covering vascular emergencies like PE, dissection, SVC syndrome, all of the patterns of lung disease like airspace disease, septal thickening, and nodular patterns with associated differentials, infections and masses, and diffuse lung diseases including interstitial lung diseases. The course includes over 30 full DICOM cases with walkthroughs of imaging findings and everything you need to know to get started. This and our other case-based courses are available on our website at navigatingradiology.com. Okay, so back to our original case, let's approach it together. So remember, for a CTPA, we image very shortly after injection of IV contrast, about 15 seconds or so. So contrast goes from the veins into the right heart and then into the main pulmonary artery, and then we image. And we want a lot of contrast in the pulmonary arteries so we can see any pulmonary emboli as relatively dark filling defects on a bright background. So when reading these cases, first we want to make sure that the opacification of the pulmonary arteries is adequate. So to do this, you can draw an ROI over the main pulmonary artery, and this should be greater than 250 Hounsville units or so. Here it's much higher at over 600 Hounsville units, so that's adequate. And then second, based on the opacification, we want to window the study appropriately. If you don't window it, the pulmonary arteries can look very bright and it can obscure small PEs. So appropriate windowing is to have the window level at about half of the main PA attenuation and the width at about double the main PA. So here, the main PA was about 600 or so. So we're gonna get the window width to about 1200 and the level to about 300. Okay, and notice the PE here that's uh, much more apparent than it was if you keep your eyes on the same PE when we did not window it. Okay, and then we can start looking for PE and we start at the level of the right heart, look at the main PA, and then we're following out the right and left pulmonary arterial system from central to Peripheral, we covered the segmental anatomy in our chest CT introduction video, but we're gonna briefly touch on it again. So on the right, uh, it's separated into 10 segments. So we here, we can see the right upper lobe uh, with the anterior segment here, the apical segmental artery here, and the posterior here. We have our right middle lobe with the medial and lateral segmental branches as well. And then the lower lobe with our superior branch posteriorly here. And then the four basal segmental branches with the anterior, medial, posterior, and lateral branches. On the left, we have eight segments. So we have the left upper lobe uh, splitting into the anterior segment here or anterior segmental branch here, and then the combined apical posterior branches. Part of the upper lobe is the lingula with the superior and inferior segmental branches followed here. And then in the left lower lobe, again, we have the superior uh, branch here or superior segmental branch posteriorly. And then we have the basal segments, which are three so we have the anterior medial branch anteriorly here, uh, and there's the medial portion, and then uh, the posterior and lateral branches here. So lateral out here and posterior branch posteriorly. And when we're looking at these branches, we don't wanna stop at the segmental branches. We wanna to continue to follow these out to the subsegmental branches. Uh, detailed segmental anatomy, again, was covered in our introductory CT chest video, but we've just outlined the uh, 
pulmonary artery branches here as well. Okay, so here we see some right upper lobar PE here outlined with the arrow. We have the anterior right upper lobe segmental uh, PE outlined there, uh, as well as in the right lower lobe with the segmental right lower lobe branches also involved, as well as the subsegmental branches. Okay, and then there are three other very important things that I want to cover. So first, acute right heart strain. Second, acute versus chronic PE. And then third, some common pitfalls on CTPA. So once you've identified acute PE, you want to look for signs of right heart strain on CT. In the setting of acute large volume PE, acute right heart strain is what can lead to death. So it's the main cause of death from acute PE. So if there are signs of PE on CT, you want to look for these signs to identify uh, evidence of right heart strain. So this is another case here that I've pulled up. Um, and you want to look for the following when you're looking for signs of right heart strain here. There's uh, quite a bit of PE and that's not the focus here. But first you want to look for contrast reflux into the IVC or inferior vena cava and the hepatic veins. So notice the hepatic veins are well opacified with contrast here on this CTPA. So you're going to see some contrast refluxing into the IVC itself, not infrequently, even when there's not right heart strain. But if it extends into the hepatic veins, that suggests an element of right heart strain. Okay, in addition, because the pressures in the left heart are usually much higher than on the right, the left ventricle usually has a convex impression onto the uh, right ventricle. With right heart strain, you may see flattening of the intraventricular septum like you have here, or even bowing towards the left ventricle. And then with increased pressures in the right heart, the right ventricle can increase in size. So if the right ventricle is bigger than the left ventricle, i.e. if the RV to LV ratio is greater than one, that is also a CT finding that can be seen with right heart strain as we see here along with enlargement of the pulmonary artery. So you should be looking for these things in every case of PE. Some of these things can be seen chronically as well. Like for example, enlargement of the PA over 2.9 to 3 centimeters alone just indicates an element of pulmonary hypertension. But if these are present, you need to note them. And in the clinical setting of significant PE, they would be suggestive of acute right heart strain. It's also an important thing to be able to differentiate acute PE and chronic PE. We cover this in more detail in our course where we walk through imaging findings of both, but here's the summary. So acute PE will appear as either a filling defect surrounded completely by contrast or more peripherally, but with an acute angle with the vessel wall. If the entire vessel is occluded with PE, the caliber of the proximal vessel will either be normal or enlarged in an acute setting. In chronic PE, filling defects tend to be more peripheral, and more specifically, when they are peripheral with an obtuse angle with the vessel wall. If they completely occlude the PA branch, the proximal vessel size is often smaller than adjacent vessels. You may also see webs or flaps, which are very linear in appearance, like this. There are additional findings of CTEF or chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension that you should look for and be aware of. Those are covered in our course. And then lastly, there are a few common pitfalls that can lead to generally overdiagnosis of PE on CTPA. Practically speaking, the most common is motion artifact. So if you're questioning something small in these segmental or subsegmental branches, switch to lung window and see if there's motion artifact in that region that's associated, especially at the lung bases. Beam hardening artifact from dense contrast can mimic PE in adjacent vessels. And there are flow related artifacts as well with the non-opacified blood coming up from the IVC uh, mixing with the opacified blood. A detailed discussion is beyond the scope of this introductory video, but is covered in our course. Again, our CT chest case-based course includes over 30 full DICOM cases, hand-selected as the most important introductory cases, including acute vascular emergencies, all of the patterns of lung disease, important infections and complications, and diffuse lung diseases like ILDs, 
Each case comes with walkthroughs of imaging findings and teaches you everything you need to know to become a better radiologist. This course, along with our other CT and MRI case-based courses, can be accessed on our website at navigatingradiology.com. So that's it for this one. I hope you learned something and hope you enjoy the course. Thanks for watching.